Okay, yeah. so, um, uh, yeah. I think we're, we're done with uh, everything except that yeah. <laughs> thing we have to talk about. Yeah, Go on. Uh, well, to anyone who is uh, watching this or listening to this, if you don't know what we're going to talk about, take a moment, go on Twitter, go on YouTube, go on uh, Instagram. Just look for your search F1. It's probably the first thing you'll see. And yeah, that's obviously yeah. the uh, the uh, contact and the subsequent crash that uh, between Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen, which caused Max his race and uh, sent him to the ICU for a checkup. Mm-hmm. And uh, subsequently, Lewis Hamilton got a 10 second penalty. And uh, essentially, the arguments are all saying either he should be suspended or like he should have gotten a stop goal penalty. It's either that or the polar opposite, which is he shouldn't have gotten a penalty at all. Yeah. And um, I know which camp I'm in. I think you guys know which camp I'm in. And yeah. uh, Yash is in the opposite camp. Yeah. Um, BK Shard, do you guys want to tell us which camp you're in? Uh, Shout why don't you go first? I'm going to say that I'm right on the fence. I think the penalty was just, but I don't think he should have gotten, he could have gotten anything more harsh. I don't think they should have been any more lenient as well. So, mm. yeah. I'll explain why later, but you all can okay. say your stance first. Yeah. So, so yesterday, for me, uh, yesterday during the race, after the incident happened, and I found out that Lewis got a 10-second penalty, I thought that the 10-second penalty was harsh. But now that it's been 24 hours, I, I've sat down, I've looked at it countless times, and it's... Uh, so my personal opinion is... I thought 10 seconds was harsh, but now that I look back at it, I don't think 10 seconds is harsh. I think 10 seconds is just maybe there is a case to be made for a stop go penalty, but there is no there is no universe where this isn't Lewis's fault. That that, that that's my that's my thinking right now. So mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I'm I'm on on Yasha's side. Uh, yeah, I'm sure Tarun. I Tarun, I'm looking at your face. <laughs> Tarun doesn't like it. <laughs> uh, this is this is what betrayal feels like, huh? Oh dude, come on! I was, I was, I was, I was never in the race. Oh, dude, I was never in the racing incident team, dude. I yeah. knew that there was no way there was a racing incident. So, uh, Hamilton should have gotten a penalty. Right now, I think that. Oh, I'm still, I'm still wondering if it should be ten seconds or stop, stop, go. But uh, yeah, we'll discuss further. <laughs> okay, Ta- Tarun, make yeah, your case. My first, my my reasoning is that I'm not saying Hamilton was not at fault. I think he was. But I think Max was also to blame because, uh, okay, I mean, if you just look at it, it's just two drivers fighting for a championship and neither is going to yield at that point. Uh, I think mm-hmm. that is that is very clear. Uh, neither driver would have backed out if he was in the other person's shoes. And ultimately, it was, uh, it was kind of like a sort of like a high octane moment kind of thing. And uh, Max wanted to keep his racing line. Lewis wanted to make sure Max didn't do that and they touched. And essentially my my feeling is that if this happened with any two drivers other than these two, it wouldn't have gotten like one percent of the 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 buzz that it has created here. Yeah, but 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 they are the top two in the drivers' championship and yeah. So I think it, the, it, the headlines costs, are sort of inevitable. It cost one the race. But, so yeah. So so just to be clear, Tarun, you're saying this is the racing incident, right? I'm saying both are at fault. So I mean it's not uh, it's not very fair to just blame it on one la, or like okay. give a penalty to one. I can see why uh you would mm-hmm. give a penalty. I think maybe uh five or ten at most la. So I mean uh like at most I can see why a ten second was given, especially with uh if I wanting to be consistent and everything, but uh anything more than that is a bit Ridiculous. Mm. Okay. Uh, Yash. <laughs> oh, okay. So um, uh, when I had a look at the incident first, like when it actually happened on screen, um, my my like it looked like a racing incident. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. It looked like a racing incident to me as well. But when they showed the onboard and stuff, okay. So cops is a corner, right? You're taking flat out by right. Okay, or maybe in a race race stream with that amount of fuel, you give a downshift and still take it flat out. So instead of eight gear, you take it in seventh gear. 
but speeds yes. are still enormous at that gear. You know, it's about like 160 kilometers. No, not 160 kilometers. 160 yeah. miles. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's 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 really quick around that corner. And that corner is in such a way, right? If you look at the racing line, the racing line is from the outside. You yeah. turn into the apex, which brings you right to the astroturf mm -hmm. uh, outside of Cops. Yeah. And that is a racing line Max was on. Okay? Yeah. So ideally, because that is a racing line, and what does racing line mean? That racing line means the optimal line, which gives you the best cornering speed. So Max ideally had the better cornering speed or the better apex speed going into Cops, the corner. Whereas Lewis, who was on the inside, it kind of already, if you think about it as logically, it kind of hurts him already because he's, he's a bit like he's to hug the apex, which means yeah. that it's going to affect his cornering speed, which yeah. means his cornering speed is going to be a lot slower than Max's mm -hmm. cornering speed. So when you turn in, Max is obviously going to fly past Lewis in a way, and you saw that initially, where Max, because of the speed he had, he went ahead of Lewis immediately. Yeah. And at that moment, I felt Lewis should have, okay, I need to back up. I can't keep on put my tire in there and hope that Max actually backs out of it. Because why yeah. should Max back up? Because, you know, he had the optimum racing line. He had the greatest, well, because of the line here, he's most definitely going to have the greatest speed going into the corner as well. Mm -hmm. So combine that and with the amount of experience Lewis has, I mean, come on, he's a seven-time world champion. You know, you see people making moves around the outside of cops because there's a lot of astroturf area. So in case if, you know, you get too close, you can just go wide of the astroturf area. But yeah. people don't usually make a move around the inside because, mm -hmm. you know, when you're on the inside, you try to go side by side because of the nature of that corner, you're going to go wide. And yeah. let's say even if both of them had made it in one piece, I'm 100% sure Verstappen would have gone wide yeah. out of the track, racing, racing mm -hmm. track, 100%. And we saw that with Charles also when Lewis actually went to overtake Charles. Charles was a bit, well, he he just, he knew that he shouldn't try and fight because he saw what happened on screen with Max and Lewis. And Lewis, I don't know, I just felt that he was super aggressive. Because initially, even when he was going into like, you know, where Stepan covered the inside, you saw Lewis, there was a small gap there, but yeah. Lewis kind of tried to just force his way through that gap. And yeah. luckily, Verstappen saw it, you know, which is why he went wide. Like, people are yeah. arguing Verstappen pushed him into the wall, which I totally disagree. Verstappen mm -hmm. tried to hug the inside, which is, you know, he's just trying to defend, uh, yeah. defend his position. And Lewis just tried to squeeze himself through that very small gap between Verstappen mm -hmm. and the wall, which is why, you yeah. know, um, Verstappen luckily saw him and went wide. Yeah, if you, so, if you see the, if you see the onboards, Verstappen actually makes a correction to the left. Exactly, uh, yeah. Yeah. But right, Lewis before he made continues a to understeer straight, so he hits him on the on the rear right. That's the thing that changed my mind actually, yeah. because uh, I feel so. For uh, for my opinion, I think uh, in my opinion, I think Lewis carried a lot of speed, tried to take him on the inside. Decide uh, like he realized that it was not going to work, but I just think he went with it anyway, which is uh, like you say, it's like it's kind of over aggressive. I yeah. think he was he was betting on Verstappen to yield, which knowing Verstappen since his rookie season, he doesn't do that. So, uh, there are a lot of people saying that uh, Verstappen was being over-aggressive. He didn't know when to back out and that cost him the race. But I think that's rubbish because the yeah. whole time Verstappen was a wing in front. Yeah. So, it it's completely like the rule book, right? It clearly states that... There was never a point Hamilton was actually uh, marginally even ahead of Verstappen. Verstappen yeah. was ahead throughout. So, ideally, yeah. that is Verstappen's corner. And because yeah. of the nature of that corner, Lewis should have backed up. Yeah. In my opinion. And because he, also you 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 can't take the inside line and miss the apex by two meters. Uh. That's just yeah. It's, yeah, it's 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 not a it's not a good look. But like, yeah. like I felt Verstappen gave him enough room to be yeah. a it was more than a cast wave, you know, actually. Yeah. If Lewis had hugged the apex, things could have gone a bit differently, or maybe not, I don't know. Uh, but I still feel that they would probably have still collided, in my opinion, because of the sheer amount of speed that goes taking that corner. It's yeah. it, it was it was it was probably going to lead to a crash, in my opinion. But yeah. I felt he had enough of a space to hug the apex. And I don't know if you guys saw the images when he actually overtook Leclerc. He was literally hugging the apex. Yeah, he was hugging the green, slight green astroturf before the apex actually, right yeah. when he's about to overtake Leclerc. Uh, yeah. So. Um, I mean, in my opinion, I thought it was super aggressive by Hamilton and it was 
in a way, a bit of a desperate move, like Honor said. Yeah. Uh, to get past Verstappen on lap one, because I think Lewis knew that if he did not get past Verstappen on lap one, it was going to be very difficult to overtake him, which I felt was a bit, um, I don't know, because, you know, just right after that whole section, Maggots and Beckett, you have a long straight coming mm-hmm. up, and Hamilton could have overtaken him there instead. But yeah, uh, exactly. He decided to be a lot riskier, and he was actually very lucky to not get much damage, you know. He just had a yeah. real rim damage, apparently, which is quite... Yeah astonishing in my opinion considering when they made contact with Stepin's uh, rear tire literally flew up yeah yeah, yeah it flew <laughs> up yeah so it, it was kind of like surprising that he only got a wheel rim damage but um, mm. now coming to the penalty decision right I felt it was quite lenient personally per se because first of all because of the speed you're carrying into that corner it's a very dangerous move if you're making the move on the outside it's a different question for me because on the outside you have a lot of space in case yeah. if you mess up you can just go wide but in the inside there's literally no room because the guy on the outside is the ideal line so yeah usually when you are racing and you're trying to make an overtake the guy behind has to be sure that you know you can make it stick because it is more of a responsibility on the guy behind to make yeah. sure that he picks his move than the guy ahead in my mm-hmm. opinion i'm not yeah. saying that this, uh, you know the guy ahead has no responsibility he does but in my opinion, here at least, I feel Verstappen left him enough space. You could say he, he had a lot of space to the left. Like I think Tarun, we talked about it in the chat. He could have gone to the left. But why should he go to the left? He was ahead. He had the better yeah. speed and everything. So why mm. should he go to the left and yield that position to a guy who's just trying to make a desperate move and get that place? Like, you know, if you look at it as a replace, right? it looks like you know, you're making that move as a F1 game, you know, just trying to... Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Dive bomb it in the yeah. inside. Is the, is, the, it, is the full send is the full send move? Yeah, yeah. At least that's how I felt it, it is. So yeah, because I, of this, yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, yeah. So uh, no, I was actually gonna move on. So you, uh, you, you can finish your point first. Finish your point first. Yeah, the point I was just making that I felt that the penalty was a bit too lenient because ten seconds. If you look at it right, Lando got five seconds for literally nothing at Austria. Yeah. You keep a total of 10 seconds for basically crossing the pit line by a centimeter or meter at Austria yeah. as well. So Lewis is getting 10 seconds for practically almost trying to kill someone in a way. If you yeah. look at it, I mean, I'm just exaggerating it here, but yeah. you know, it, that that crash could have gone horribly wrong. Uh, yeah, it's true. Yeah. So um, I mean, a 51G uh, impact uh, for Max and really unlucky for him he he actually just missed the water barriers like yeah, the water yeah. barriers ended about i think about two meters before where he crashed so he went into tire wall like so uh, i think that's the reason why he was so concussed and he had to be evacuated to the to the icu um anyway i i just want to bring the attention to the rule book the rule book has this and i quote a collision at the apex is entirely the fault of the attacker provided the the defender is a hit even by a slight margin so i think that kind of negates any argument that this is a racing incident so uh yeah so that, but that neither car us... made it to the apex sorry neither car actually made it to the apex no your guy should have been at the apex but he yeah. wasn't <laughs> exactly but they I mean... made contact before he would have hit the apex no, no, but you see, he was already understeering. He would have never made an apex at all. Lewis had no chance. He carried unless... way too much speed into the corner, dude. Yeah. And for I mean, the line he was taking, there was no way he was going to meet the apex with the amount of speed he carried, which is why he yeah. understeered into a step and which is what led to the collision. If he had yeah. maybe slowed down a little bit and tried to carry a bit lesser speed and hug the apex, the outcome could have been different. I mean, the fact is that Lewis had his uh, front wing next to Max's front wheel as they were turning into the corner. Yeah, they're and still then, behind though. Yeah, no, as, and but the thing is, and then the contact was made front wheel to rear wheel. So it shows that Lewis was pulling out at the moment. He was slowing down to try and hit the apex. But, that's, but, but, but it's too late. But I mean, then I can make the argument that he was slowing down because he was understeering, no? Because... Like, oh, the other other side of the argument is that Verstappen, because of his ideal line, he just carried more spin into the apex, which is why there was a difference in that, you know. Mm. I mean, I, don't, I if he had hugged the apex, it could have been a lot different. But he yeah. missed the apex. That's the crucial key here. 
Uh, and in my opinion, because of that, I felt he should have had at least a drive through penalty. I don't know about stop and go, but at least a drive through. Yeah. And I guess another thing is if he if he was to hit the apex, this whole in- incident, I don't even think it wouldn't even have occurred because Max would be carrying so much speed, like Yash said, through the ideal line. So if you want to hit the apex, you have to slow down significantly. So I don't even think this would have happened if Lewis had hit the apex. But I just hit. I just think he tried to dive down the inside and just all went sideways. Uh, anyway, Sh- Sharad, I think... Uh, <laughs> l- let the man speak. <laughs> Sharad, uh, g- give us your opinions. I mean, I, I'm going to go against everything y'all said. I think this was a racing incident on lap one. Uh, okay. Basically, I mean, as you mentioned, Cops is a very fast corner. You know, on, on, on your first lap, you have cold tyres, you have cold brakes. You know, and a, few, a heavy fuel load. You, you know, I guess Lewis thought he could make the, the corner, but yeah, in those kind of moments, is you know high octane. You know, we can say as much as we want. You know, he should have backed out. You know, he could have given more space and all that. But I think in that moment, you just want to get the lead, no matter what. I think both of them knew that if they got in front, it would be easier to secure the lead from there. So. I don't know if I can if I say that you know Lewis could have backed out, then I could also argue that Max could have given more space. But then from that point also I could say Max is the lead, so why should he give more space? He's gonna keep going back and forth, uh, in my yeah. opinion. So I guess for me the penalty was just. I also felt both guys could have done anything differently. I don't know. Maybe just what I think. And I think at the end of the day, they had a championship fight. It's gonna boil over at some point, and mm. it did happen in this race. So, you know, first things first, I'm glad that Max is okay. I think good to see that he didn't sustain any major injuries and whatnot. And ironically, what this does is that it closes the championship fight back again. As much as I don't want this to happen, it happens. And then now we have, what, a seven-point gap seven between, points, yeah. Yeah, between Lewis and Max. So, you know, I think, you know, this argument is going to go on for days. Let's be honest. Yeah, know, yeah. Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, wherever you look at it. Uh, it's just been full of people trying to justify who did what. One thing, yeah. one thing I don't condone though is the racism against Lewis Hamilton. That's a big no from yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but other than that, yeah, I mean, hopefully, you know, the tensions boil down over you know these two weeks, and hopefully, you know, uh, what? Okay, one thing I will disagree with is how I think Red Bull. Especially Max reacted to this whole thing. They all see he unfollowed Lewis on Insta and then called oh, really? Lewis. Yeah, he did. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't know. And then he, oh. he said Lewis was unsportsman. Like, yeah, I yeah. saw his uh, Instagram. I mean, I guess yeah. it's in the heat of the moment. You, know, you, you say these kind of I, things and all. Yeah, I, no, I think it's uh, mostly to do with uh, the... The penalty. Cel- the celebration. celebration. And uh, yeah, like after Lewis yeah. finished the race, he celebrated. But personally, I think that celebration was more to thank the British fans. Yeah. And since last year, we didn't have any fans in Silverstone, right? So I just think he was happy to see them. The The thing that irks me was actually his uh, post-race comments uh, that Lewis said. I mean, we all know the mentality of the F1 driver, you know. They, they they always think that they are right. So, but essentially the, the gist of what Lewis was saying is, he was essentially saying, I don't know why Max is being so aggressive, but I was never going to give up the place. So, like, yeah. what does that mean? So, it's I like, it means both of you are being aggressive, right? I uh, just think he was being a bit hip- hypocritical. And he was, I think Max took it in a way that uh, Lewis was trying to pin the... Blame the entire Max. blame of the incident on Max himself. So, yeah, he, he just he had to pull out the big guns and fo- unfollow him on Instagram, I guess. But, <laughs> but but clearly, you can see from his Instagram post that he is not happy. And now that uh, I was actually seeing some comments online, they're saying that respect is out of the window. So now anything can happen. So, like, uh, I don't know if you'll see, like, a Senna and Pros kind of situation Oof. where they just crash into each other on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, it remains to be seen. It remains to be seen. But Well, uh, Toto Wolf just, I think, before the race or something, uh, like, uh, you know, because the championship was going towards Red Bull's way, so yeah. on, he said that, you know, it only takes one DNF for Max and Red Bull to get into championship. 
and yep. now you know Red Bull left that DNF with Max. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm just like kind of like spice things up, you know. Oh, maybe yeah. it's intentional, <laughs> but obviously it's not intentional. But like, um, yeah, yeah. And I guess it's, it's, oh sorry, yeah, okay. go on, go on. I was gonna say, you know, the next track is Hungary. It's another track Luis usually goes well at. So yeah. yeah, I guess the championship fight really is back on now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The and another thing is from Red Bull as a team, the constructors gap is really small now. It's only four points. And mm-hmm. since Bottas has been more consistent than Perez this season, uh that's the reason why the gap is so small, because Bottas is consistently finishing fourth or third or second. Whereas like Perez sometimes you have like this weekend he didn't finish in the points. And Max also didn't finish in the points. So that's yeah. a grand total of zero for Red Bull. So it's these kind of weekends that in the constructors championship at least, these kind of weekends really turn the tide. And this weekend is really kind of a reminder that, you know, the, the, the championship is not like all done. Like yeah. there's still a lot more drama to come. How many races do we have? What, like 14 races, I think? Yeah, like, still yeah. a lot more, man. Yeah, it's going to be crazy, honestly. Yeah. And I cannot wait, personally. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I don't agree with is uh, what Helmut Marco said about Hamilton getting a ban. Oh, no, that's too much. Up. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, 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 that was, I agree as well. Uh, that's very but ridiculous. It's Helmut Marko. It's Helmut Marko, yeah. <laughs> Not, nothing he says should be taken seriously. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I mean, it was a risky move by Hamilton, I felt. Uh, I just felt that maybe uh, a more greater penalty than 10 seconds would have been more justifiable because of the risk and the speed involved. That, that's my only opinion of it. Mm-hmm. Otherwise... Uh, it was a very close, but I felt there was more to blame on Hamilton than Verstappen in general. But uh, obviously, like the entire reaction of Verstappen and everything, I guess it's good for the entertainment for us. Yeah, you know, yeah. we're going to get a lot of spicy battles coming. I mean, who knows, man, if Hungary, both of them, are, you know, on each other's asses again, uh, we yeah. might see some elbows out now. Like, it's very re- oh. reminiscent, re- very reminiscent to how it became with Hamilton and Rosberg. Which is yeah. great because we have lacked that fight for the past few years. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That was really Hamilton and Rosberg was the last, like really down to the last race yeah. kind of championship battles that yeah, we yeah. saw. Yeah, and because even, even though like with the step and I thought at Ferrari it was it was kind of it was maybe only lasted like about half a season. It was yeah, yeah. After, it yeah. was it was very friendly. Yeah. Like yeah, there wasn't any grudge or yeah. anything. Like yeah. you know, nothing was personal between Ferrari and. Mercedes when they both were going for it. But now this is personal for Red Bull and Max after yeah. what happened this weekend. <laughs> so yeah. And then in in twenty eighteen, like it was only half a season and it ended by Vettel putting the Ferrari into the barricades. So at that moment, like everyone knew that Lewis <laughs> yeah. was gonna win anyway, so it, it didn't matter. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's it's finally it's nice to see. At least we have some like or you know, like things that are changing, like Next weekend, Hamilton might come out on top. And after that, it, it's all over again. Maybe every single weekend, Verstappen can come out on top of Hamilton. That's the kind of thing that we watch racing for. So uh, I kind of like this situation. I'm not going to lie. But <laughs> if if it ends up with Hamilton winning, <laughs> I'm like, oh, man. But, you know. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be a... It's going to be a very good season of uh, Drive to Survive next year. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That is for sure. Exaggerate yeah. everything. It's going to yeah. work really well for them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But one thing I have to say, though, as a fan, I was quite sad because I think it deprived us of a good battle for the race. I yeah. think they would have had yeah. a very good battle. Yeah. yeah. True. And for sure. I think, you know, I think, I don't know whether you all heard, but Lewis actually put in a lot of effort for this race. You know, he went to the simulator on Friday morning, I think. And he was like, why are we not doing anything? Then he went to drive the simulator. You know, he really worked hard for this weekend, uh, to be fair to him. So, yeah, maybe you know the accident took a bit of time. I think you just had to put in that uh that extra bit of effort. Yeah. Oh wait, you all yeah, saw the yeah, meme. I think you all see the meme. He took a photo of the Eiffel Tower and he asked, "Where should I go next?" And then a friend commented, "The simulator." <laughs> <laughs> it's like dang. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah. I mean, to be fair, he did like, He did go to the simulator. Yeah. <laughs> and I think Mercedes brought upgrades for his race as well, so it mm-hmm. worked pretty well for them. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, I, I spoke, I told Tarun that, you know, before the weekend, I think it'd be nice if Lewis got a home win, you know, as much as 
not the biggest fan of him. I think you know, winning in front of his home crowd is just something nice to see. So, yeah. But but the win I feel kind of feels a bit bittersweet because first of all he kind of took uh, his rival out and then <laughs> he was led by by Bottas as well, so yeah. it's not like he had to work extremely hard to True. get the win, you know, yeah. in a way, because yeah. um, he you know he all, you see I mean you see I agree that he drove a fantastic race after that incident I'm not going to take anything away from Lewis he drove a great race. Uh, from getting a 10 seconds penalty, uh, he came back over to Orlando, uh, and then who was it? Bottas was ahead of him only, yeah, before yeah. Charles. So, mm-hmm. and I guess you know, I give it to Lewis that he went for the same exact move which he did against Verstappen to Leclerc as well. Yeah. Um, which hopefully, well, luckily this time paid off because if they had collided, I would have lost my shit. To- <laughs> <laughs> you see, uh, Le- Leclerc actually went onto the Astro and he almost lost it. Yeah, yeah. Was, my heart was in my mouth, man. Because yeah. over the over the past, like the the three previous laps before the overtake, uh, I actually sort of resigned to to the reality of Hamilton winning the race, and I was like, mm. okay, just clean overtake, no issues, please. And then Leclerc goes onto the Astro and he skids a bit. <laughs> oh man! But overall, still not a terrible. We can to be a Ferrari fan, but uh, he could have won, man. <laughs> Actually, I thought yeah. Charles would have won, to be honest. Same, because same. At, mm. at one point, he said he had to face to keep Lewis behind, yeah. I think. Yeah. But I think was, it, was it his engine issue that cost him? Yeah, dude. His, his he, had, he, had the, he had the petrol saving uh, feature <laughs> turned on. He had the start stop <laughs> turned on on his, on his engine. <laughs> and Ferrari always, they are in like such a good position. Something happens and it's always their own doing. Yeah. <laughs> always a mechanic no, I, up or a wheel gun goes wrong or something. Yeah, yeah. No, but I felt the reason why Charles lost this race was in, not instead of the engine, because I think the car was still okay. He was still doing a pretty good pace. Like, it came back on. But yeah. I think it was just the tyres. Uh, Mercedes were just better on the hearts, whereas Ferrari were not that quick on the hearts. And that made the difference. I think Charles was faster on the mediums at one point. Than the yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. Absolutely, both yeah. Ferraris were, both the Ferraris think, were yeah. good on mediums. Like that medium stint, if I'm not wrong, Charles was either matching or faster than uh, Lewis. Lewis, yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a couple of uh, faster slaps also, like at yeah. that point mm-hmm. in the race. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. There is just something about the hard compound that Ferrari need to sort out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but and, to be fair, no, but to be fair, right, a lot of people thought, you know, Ferrari's tire management was going to be bad, but actually it turned out better than McLaren and even Mercedes at some point. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's true. I mean, Ferrari were honestly the surprise package this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I guess that that's the benefit of having less testing. It gives you surprises and it gives you more joy in that sense because you don't know what to expect and suddenly something happens which you're not expecting. You get yeah. more happiness and excitement from that as fans. So, uh, I mean, I really hope that maybe going forward we have lesser testing in general. Mm. What's the next uh, race with uh, sprint qualifying? Monza, Italy, Monza. Oh God, that's going to be <laughs> wow. Okay. That's going to be crazy. That's going to be crazy. Qualifying itself is going to be crazy. I can't imagine spring quality. Yeah, no, but the problem with Italy is that because you're going to have a DRS train, it's actually quite hard to overtake. Yeah. Yeah, that's mm. the thing. It's hard so, to break a DRS DRS train within uh, the first few laps. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, if if last year's Italian Grand Prix is anything to go by, I think. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe a surprise winner, who knows? Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. As we just need Hamilton to get 10 seconds again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah, now that you mentioned it, he got a penalty that races. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he did. So, yeah. so who knows? Maybe the next surprise package will be uh, one of the Haas's. <laughs> oh, Haas a bit for the win. <laughs> yes. But, you know, I think that will take like uh, 18 DNFs to happen. <laughs> Uh, oh, yep. oh man, imagine next season, man. How suddenly surprised everyone with the best call on the grid. Dude, they're, they're <laughs> like they've been devoting the most time, or like they've been sacrificing the most of this season of yeah, any yeah. of the other team. So yeah. they have. They, they should they should have at least the fifth best car there. Yeah. If not, <laughs> yeah, the they operation has up there. Has been blocked. <laughs> yeah. It's a proper failure. Yeah. Because I think this year is just about making that race quota and getting the money in so that they spend it more towards next year's cars. 
Because I think this year's car is exactly the same as last year's cars, apart from yeah, some minor tweaks here and there. So uh, I think they just brought a different package for like uh, Monaco. And should be bringing one for Monza. Yeah, yeah. Okay, boys. Yeah. Uh, I think we have gone off on a tangent here, but there's still uh, the Hungary <laughs> race prediction to do.